Have reactors that are that are packaged into con, you know container sized uh, shipping container sized devices, and so we are building those containers in a factory and shipping them out to site and, and arranging them into a race. When air passes over that material, it absorbs CO2. Uh, when that material is, is loaded, it takes about 30 minutes. Uh, we take that reactor offline, heat it up, and that releases the CO2, which is the product. Uh, and then that reactor is put back in service. So you know, we have hundreds or thousands of reactors operating in unison. So we have some that are always capturing and some that are delivering the CO2. Ingredients for a direct air capture project is that you know, you need access to land and land that has the right geology for you know for sequestering the CO2 or a use case for the CO2, and then you also need to be partnered and have access to renewables as well because direct air capture is a fairly energy and intensive process. There is no real product because ultimately what we're doing is we're doing disposal. And the product that we're generating is actually through the way things are being monitored and tracked, it's actually a fiscal instrument. It's actually a carbon removal credit, which is the actual financial product that we sell. Today, almost anything with an on-off switch, except for the most simple lights, have at least one and often dozens or in some cases hundreds of semiconductors inside. The first, trans the first uh, semiconductors that were available for sale in the 1960s had four transistors on them. Today, if you go to the, the store and buy a new smartphone, just the primary chip will have at least 10 billion transistors on it. And so from four to 10 billion has been the rate of progress and the price of a chip hasn't changed much. So your refrigerator, your 
microwave, your coffee maker, they all have chips in them too. Sometimes quite simple chips, but often increasingly sophisticated chips. And if you take a new car, for example, that car will on average have 1,000 semiconductors inside. Some of them doing things like making the windows move up and down when you press the button, uh, but others uh, much more complex managing any sort of autonomous driving systems you have, uh, for example, or communicating with the cell phone network. Semiconductors are one of the most widely traded goods internationally. Uh, and that's especially true when you think not only about chips themselves, but about the devices they make possible, phones, PCs, servers. And so today, trade-in chips is uh, a fundamental pillar of the international trading system. It's actually so important that China spends as much money each year importing chips as it spends importing oil. auto industry is the best example of an industry that across the world faced a deficit of chips that they needed during the pandemic. And, uh, in the US, Japan, in Europe, auto firms uh, had to let cars sit unfinished because they couldn't acquire just often a handful of semiconductors that they needed uh, for critical features. And the global auto industry was estimated to have uh, lost several hundred billion dollars in lost sales because of shortages of semiconductors. production process is actually uh, shockingly concentrated. Uh, for many types of advanced chip making equipment or software or manufacturing processes, there's just a couple of companies in the world capable of undertaking uh, the type of production that you need. And for many critical components, there's actually just one company that has the know-how to do cutting edge uh, production. So you've got a global market, but you've got highly concentrated production.